Cade Valley Primary in Hertfordshire, Emma Hernan's class is studying the topic of friction. So the task today is for her guided reading group to choose, read and analyse a non-fiction text, assessing its value as a source of information. The first thing I'd like to do is, is to choose one. So which one would you like us to, to look at today? Mm. Which one? Have a look at it. Which one do you think? I think maybe that one. Right. Oh, you're all going for this one. At Princess May Primary in East London, a Year 5 group reads a fictional story about Bertha and Fiona, twin sisters who wrestle verbally and physically. Bertha's Secret Battle. Just by looking at the title, what do you think the story might be about? About Bertha's secret? Yep, she might have a secret. What about the picture? Does that tell you anything? What the story might be about? Ashkin. Um, I think uh, the problem will be about these two um, ladies fighting about being good or bad. This group is mainly composed of children who speak Spanish as their first language. Fortunately, guided reading teacher Giovanna Ayonta can speak a bit of Spanish. In Spanish, that will be juego justo. You might have some children who are uh, from another country with English as an additional language, some whose first language is in English, and you might well have a discussion about the complex vocabulary in there, which will support the children who have English as an additional language, and it'll mean that the children who's languages English as their first language will be able to scaffold for the other children. What other words are there that... Yes. She um, smashed the door. Yeah, exactly. Open. So the word smashed implies that she's really strong, she's broken the door. Making progress in reading crucially depends on selecting the right book for the right group. But you should always be making sure that the book is interesting to the children is readable at a fairly high level of accuracy, certainly between 90 and 95 percent. Otherwise the book is too difficult, they'll be struggling with the words and not getting to the meaning. So comprehension is the key objective for both the fiction and non-fiction readers. I was looking to find evidence of the children um, understanding non-fiction texts, recognising features of non-fiction texts and being able to retrieve elements of information from it. Do you want to show it to the rest of the group? Okay. So read out your question again, Ella, for us. Do the pictures or diagrams help you understand the information? Oh, so I think Ella looks like she's ready to choose one. So to test their comprehension, Emma Hernan asks her pupils to choose a lucky dip question from her bag. The questions were designed to look a bit more interesting than a sheet of white paper. Okay. And um, what does your question say? Would you recommend this book to someone else? Why? In order for the children to be able to read a non-fiction book effectively, they've got to be able to identify the contents, the index, the glossary, and be able to pick out particular parts of the book by using features such as subheadings. What else could your question be? Perhaps we could look at these bits. What do we call these bits? Subtitles. Subtitles or subheadings. We call them subtitles or subheadings. The Princess May group have moved on and are now silently reading about Bertha's misdemeanours. You need to see if you can work out what is Bertha's problem. So while you're reading, keep that question in mind. Meanwhile, Giovanna listens to one pupil reading aloud. She took a flying leap into the room. She shook, she shook her first. She then checks their understanding of words, which they may not recognise in English. Who can tell me what they think the word fair play might mean? They're playing fairly. Right, good boy. So, can you um, give me an example? Like, they're playing fair, like no cheating. Well done, good boy. I assess the um, children's progress during the session by constantly asking questions to ensure their understanding of the text. So, what does that make you think of what she's like? Fair play, Fiona plays nicely, but she's Bertha, big Bertha, the bone cruncher. Yes. Uh, Big Bertha, the very culture, um, could play uh, nasty. Yep, she, yeah, just think, if someone's crunching your bones like this, um, 
do you think you'd be happy about it? No. No, I think you'd be a bit upset, wouldn't you? I was looking to find evidence of the children um, understanding non-fiction texts, recognising features of non-fiction texts, and being able to retrieve um, elements of, of information from it. In order for the children to be able to read a non-fiction book effectively, they've got to be able to identify the contents, the index, the glossary, and be able to pick out particular parts of the books by using features such as subheadings.